so special being on the Sea of Galilee and being here uh, just the last two days and seeing it in its real form and what it is. Uh, I think I was hearing Kat say it just a second ago, it's like, yeah, it's not as big as I always maybe thought it was or imagined it to be. I think one of the things I've just been thinking about is just this whole concept, like these disciples, many of them, they grew up on this body of water. They, they knew this area, they knew this, uh, they fished in this space. Yet what's always fascinating is how they might even know the truth that it's not that big and they know where the other side is. But when you get yourself into an obstacle or a storm or when you're facing fear, it's amazing how quickly fear will come in and take the truth from you. Yeah. And lies will step in and steal what you know to be true. And one of the stories that I'm thinking about as we're out here tonight is from Mark chapter four. I've preached from it many different times, many different ways. But let's just look at it tonight for a moment. Mark chapter four, verse 35. That day when evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Just let's go from that side to that side. I wanna take you on a journey. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. I've always loved that idea that there's lots of boats around Jesus, but you better make sure that Jesus is in your boat, yeah. <laughs> right? Like, I don't wanna be one of the boats around Jesus. I wanna make sure that Jesus is in my boat where we're going. The scripture says a furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, teacher, don't you care if we drown? Then Jesus got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. So much taking place in this story, but as we just think about his disciples in a boat, probably not too different from this one, going from one place to the other and Jesus is in that boat. And the promise of Jesus for all of us has never been that we're not gonna encounter storms or we're not gonna have pain or struggles, even as I'm on this boat with so many of you, I can just recount the last seven years, different obstacles that you've walked through, whether it's your dad being diagnosed with cancer, whether it's a near fatal car accident, whether it's a miscarriage, whether it's infertility. Uh, we all face different types of storms, but the great promise is Jesus says, I'm in your boat, I'll take care of you, and I'll walk with you. And the scripture says that they're in this storm. What's amazing about this body of water, I, I, I've studied it before, but now being here, once again, just new perspective, Mount Hermon, that mountain that we were on earlier today, high, they, they say a lot of that cold air comes down and it crashes down with this body of water. And believe it or not, this little small body of water can create big storms, big waves, lots of wind. Yeah. In some cases, you can't even see the other side anymore. I think that's one of the reasons why we always talk about keeping a vision. A vision's not what you can see in your natural sight. It's what, it's what you carry in your heart. It's what we yeah. carry as a church. That uh, where God's taken us the last seven years, it hasn't been through spiritual sight, it's yeah. been through faith. And that's how yeah. we got here is through faith. We have to keep faith in the midst. We have to make sure that we keep a vision because we have to know where we're headed because wind will come and storms will come and obstacles will happen. We'll say, is Jesus anywhere around? That's what they started doing. They're like, where's Jesus? He must have left us. He must have, he must have quit on us. But the scripture says he's actually down below the deck sleeping. And uh, you could look at that and say, man, that's how I feel. I feel like God's asleep with all my problems. Or you could say, who is this God who sleeps in the midst of storms? And maybe if my God is sleeping in a storm, maybe I too can rest. And maybe when I'm in my biggest storm, I shouldn't strive, I shouldn't strain, I should actually let go and let God. I too should rest. I should take the posture of rest, of trusting God. Yeah. And they wake Jesus up and they go, teacher, don't, don't you care if we drown? I don't know if you've ever been in one of those places where like, you're so desperate that you start wondering, you know, God, have you left me? <laughs> in our 2022 problems, you know, like, dude. No, I haven't left you. I'm, I'm trying to actually teach you something in the midst of your problem. Yeah. This, is, uh, this is the posture to take on. And he gets up, pulling sleep out of his eyes. He's yawning, and he gets out on the boat, and he just, with just simple words, just a few words from Jesus. He says, quiet, be still. Another translation says, peace, be still. And immediately, yeah. 
That's the power of a word from God. Yeah. And maybe even some of us, as we're here, like, I think every year I start the year, I'm always going, God, just give me a word. I, just, I want one word from you, Jesus. Because a word will carry you yeah. a long way. Peace, be still. And immediately, the storm became completely calm. He looks at him and says, you still have no faith? Like, you've seen me do so many things now, but you still, you're still wondering. You're still wondering if I love you or if I care about you. I think for all of us, when we go through struggles, like, maturity in the Lord is to know, he, he loves me. He's still with me. I'm going through something for a reason. There's a purpose behind this pain. There's a purpose in the struggle. The struggle has its purpose. And then the Bible says, and I love it, it says it became completely calm. And the water night's not even completely calm, but I've always just imagined that the Sea of Galilee, like glass, completely calm, no ripples. Yeah. It was a supernatural phenomenon yeah. that the Sea of Galilee became completely calm. And then the word, if you notice in Mark 4, it says they were terrified. And the phrases that I've always liked is that they were afraid in the storm, yeah. but terrified in the calm. Afraid in the storm, but terrified in the calm. And it said, who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? Yeah. And I love this idea that we serve a God. The question is not, can my God calm the wind and the waves? The question is, can my God sleep in the midst of the wind and the waves? Right. He controls it. He's above it. He's stronger. Why were they terrified? Because they met the storm's match. Yeah. The Savior is greater than the storm. Yeah. And whatever your storm is, whatever our obstacles are, I'm going to go back to this moment here on the Sea of Galilee when some followers of Jesus, just like us, were trusting Him to take him to the other side. And although it got bumpy and although it got scary, and although they knew the other side wasn't that far, the fear was robbing them of the truth. And they were doubting. And they woke him up. He hadn't left him. He was sleeping, not because he had left him, because he was teaching them something, to trust, to rest. Let go of the anxiety, let go of the fear. It doesn't control you, it's not from God. And he wakes up with just a word, and then they're terrified. Wait a minute. You tell me this man who's been in this boat this whole time is more powerful than the rain and the wind. That's who, that's who I want to worship. And that's where our, that's where our fear really should belong. The Bible says that fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. And um, obstacles and struggles, it will come, but wisdom, knowing that God is with you and that He, he gets all of my awe and all of my wonder, not my not my problem, not my, not my situation that I'm in, Jesus. And uh, that's where wisdom begins. Yeah. It's beautiful. I was thinking about how the disciples say, who is this that commands even the wind and the waves? And I think we've all come to a moment in our lives, like as we look past, in, the, in our past where we've surrendered our lives to Jesus, and it's that moment, it's that holy fear of who is this that He really can speak peace and He changes our life. But then I think through life as we follow Jesus, it's not just one storm in our life that Jesus teaches us how to sleep through. Mm -hmm. I think there are a lot of seasons in life yeah. and a lot of different storms that even, you know, when we can see shore to shore, out of nowhere a storm arises. Mm -hmm. And even though we know the land and we feel in control, we suddenly realize we're not. Yeah. And I think every storm is an opportunity to learn how to sleep in it. Every single storm is an opportunity to cry out to Jesus. And I love that Jesus, He speaks peace to the wind and the waves, but I think more importantly because of the cross and the resurrection for you and I, like He speaks peace to our heart. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And that's what we need, Amen. that shalom peace, yeah. Yeah. the wholeness nothing missing, nothing broken. It's a restoration that is far beyond even our understanding in the here and now. We won't know till we're face to face with Him just how deep the depths of the resurrection speak to every part of us, our physical body, our thoughts, our emotions, every part of us. And um, today I feel like here we are, we're on the Sea of Galilee and I'm like, I don't wanna be so concerned with capturing content as I am yeah. all of us, like going home with God creating something new in us. Yeah. Yeah. Like I love these moments and Rich and I, we're not just sharing for sharing sake because we need to. It's a holy moment yeah. of like, God, you, you walked, you walked here. You walked among us, yeah. all God, all man. Yep. And I don't want to miss the holiness, um, not of the land, but of the moment. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I want to stare at the water. I want to let my heart go back to those moments. I want to come back with a fire in my spirit so that I can walk out my journey. And I, I don't know about you, but honestly, guys, I don't need anything else in life. God has blessed us. Yeah. I'm not coming here asking for something. I'm going, God, give us wisdom to lead your people. Yeah. Yeah. Give us wisdom to love the city of Miami. Like Rich and I were talking just a moment ago alone right here. And that's the cry of our heart is God speak to us. Yeah. Give us wisdom. Empower us by the power of your spirit. Yeah. Thank you for this moment. I think moments to pause and reflect are key. You know, and I know that there are storms represented right here among us. And definitely for the community that we get to lead back home, there's so many different storms that people are facing. Yeah. But God reveals time and time again His peace. And it goes beyond our understanding, but it's ours to hold. And I'm so grateful, grateful to worship with you. Grateful that just like Wild is asleep in my arms, yeah. like, yeah. you know, he doesn't need a bed. He just needs my arms. Doesn't matter where he is. If I'm here with him, he's he's got a home. Home is where we are together. And I think of that with Jesus. Wow. He's he's with us. We can rest in the storm. Really he teaches us time and time again.